Now, in the lead up to the general elections 2020, we spoke with political scientist Dr. Winford James, uh, specifically about three marginal constituencies. We're very happy to be speaking with him after the elections to get some of his takeaways and other things that we can look at with regard to these elections. So we say good evening, Dr. James. Thank you so much again for being a part of this discussion. Good evening, Mr. Rustant, and good evening to your viewership. First question, aftermath. What, uh, what, are, some of, you. what, what are some of the takeaways that you, that you gleaned from the election results? Well, first of all, we don't have the, any final figures with respect to the count. We just don't. Um, we, the political parties probably have more information than commentators like myself. Uh, in fact, when I was on CNC3 last night, I was surprised to see the Prime Minister coming on to declare that the PNM won. So I still don't have the figures. I don't know what are the majorities in the so-called marginal seats. If you have the figures, you'll have to tell me and the viewership what those figures are. But I understand that the figures are such that the opposition leader, Mrs. Prasad de Sessa, uh, has, decided to has decided to challenge the results, or so far, challenge the results and call for a recount. I understand further that the count in three constituencies will be done uh, starting at three o'clock, which means that it's probably going on now. And in two constituencies tomorrow, probably at the same time. But except that I'm provided with the actual counts as they are now, I can have very little to say, except you asked me some specific questions, Mr. Rossman. No, looking at the three constituencies that we spoke to when, when we were looking at marginals, and when we say marginals, we went by your definition of having a majority percentage of 10% or 10% at most. No, Barataria yeah. San Juan, Moruga Tableland, Chugonas East. Okay. Did, did, they, did they trend towards what you were expecting? Yes, um, except that um, in two of them, Barataria, uh, San Juan, and uh, Maruga Tableland, we had majorities that far ex exceeded my expectations. And in those constituencies, clearly there was some fluidity of voters uh, as a result of a number of issues not not the least of which is dissatisfaction with the ruling party. I believe um, dissatisfaction with, uh, in, in the case of Mauruga Tableland, dissatisfaction with the choice of candidate over a, 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 a bright, young, um, highly educated uh, choice. Uh, the, 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 the choice of Gypsy over Dr. Lovell Francis. Um, who is young and upcoming, you know, I think that angered the uh, electorate in Oruga Tableland. Uh, they burned tires, don't forget, uh, Mr. Rustin, they burned tires in the road to show their dissatisfaction. And even though the government had done some stuff, had done some development works in the constituency, um, there was still far more uh, people voting for the UNC than the poll suggested. That is why I'm appealing to uh, the dissatisfaction, the disaffection with the PNM. Um, there may have been other factors, but if you have uh, a marginal, by definition, being ethnically balanced, with a small majority coming most likely from the undecided voters, from the small ethnicities, then when that number jumps up, you've got to look to see where the, uh, the numbers are coming from. And it appears that it's not only the undecided uh, category that yielded those votes, 
but also disaffected PNM uh, members, PNM voters who shifted allegiance in this particular um, general election. That's Maruga. In terms of Barataria San Juan, um, well, we know that there was a, a, a strong Muslim discontent uh, with the PNM. We, we remember how explosive uh, Nafisa Mohammed's charge was when she resigned from the PNM. We know uh, uh, about um, the coming together of certain Muslim groups um, against the PNM. Uh, and there may be associated dissatisfactions within the, the uh, constituency that we, we don't know too much about. But we can point to those high visibility issues which may have been responsible for um, a greater uh, turnout for the UNC. By the way, they held the seat, the Baratara San Juan seat. They kept it, it's just that they increased their margin. In the case of Maruga table and uh, the PNM held the seat and lost it. There are other uh, um, other marginals whose vote count I am not sure of. Uh, St. Joseph, one of them. Um, well, they, they, they talk about um, Talparo, uh, the Talparo, but the, 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 the majority in 2015, I think it was about 2,800. So uh, I didn't expect that seat to, to go to the UNC, but certainly the UNC came, covered a lot of ground. I think the, what I hear from what I hear is the Jolene John lost by 500 uh, votes. But the, the margin was too great for her to overcome. But she did overcome it to 2,300 votes uh, in her march to towards possible victory, which she fell short of. Uh, I expected Point of Bear to figure, but I don't know. I think PNM um, lost that seat, or not lost it, did not win it. Um, uh, UNC retained it, but I don't know what the final figure is. So ask me another specific question, Mr. Ruston. Now, you speak of the fluidity of Maruga Tableland. And then, with regard to Point of Bear, you just made a distinction of losing versus not winning. Do you see... Do I, I am losing you. Your voice, the audio is... I haven't heard you. Apologies. No, in, in Point of Pair, you, you spoke mm -hmm. about the difference between losing or not winning. And you also spoke yes. about the fluidity of yes. voters in Maruga Tableland. Do you yes. see uh, the figures as they are, and right, quite rightly so, we don't have the definite figures because recounts are happening. Uh, but, yes. But do you see the figures as they are at this point saying that people are necessarily voting for someone as opposed to against someone? What can we say on that well, at this point? The, the emphasis should be against. And, and, and when they vote against, you put the emphasis there, they are automatically voting for somebody else. But the emphasis should be on against. People are leaving their loyalties and are going elsewhere. So we must, we must um, explore. We must explore that move. Why is it they're doing so? And because people vote for a multiplicity of reasons, we cannot disaggregate um, scientifically very clearly. We can't do that. But because we didn't expect um, that movement away from the PNM, um, yes, and therefore in support of the UNC, we begin to ask ourselves why. We couldn't see that because the polls predisposed us to understanding or to, be, or to thinking that the uh, PNM would win the seat, retain the seat. That did not happen. And I think the margin shut up. I don't know the difference, as I said. I don't know what the majority is. But that has to be explained. 
Because one of the main characteristics of a marginal is that there is ethnic balance which can be affected by the undecided vote and by the vote of um, ethnicities. Um, that, did that come into play? I suspect that it always does. But in addition to that, I'm thinking that this affected uh, PNM members were sending a message um, to the leadership of the PNM as well. And on that note, we take a short break. We come back with more. We, I, I actually want to continue the point of disaffection and how that can be re-energized and turned into a positive. But we continue with this conversation when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. We continue speaking with political scientist Dr. Winf Winford James. Now, Dr. James, you were speaking about disaffection. And I want to know if that disaffection can be used for positive. Because sometimes... People say, well, they're going to vote for us anyhow so we can do what we want. That may be one train of thought. Can a figure that, like what the experience that we've just seen in Maruga, can that lead to proactive measures being taken, saying, okay, well, I think this is a good person for the candidate, as opposed to saying, I think this is a person that we can put in this place. What are your thoughts on this affection? You are talking about after the vote and in anticipation of a future vote? Or are you talking about the disaffection being inside of this vote and whether, in fact, we could interpret what I am thinking is disaffection as something positive? Which one of the, what's, which one of the two foci are you, are, are you having here? Well, at this point, I'm looking at whether or not Maruga, as the election results for Maruga Tableland going forward, will that inspire you, uh, parties to think about or think a yeah, little lost, more about lost, the, the candidates that we're putting in those positions? You're talking about the future because I lost part of what you're saying. Yes, so we're going, going forward. Oh. Of course, it's a negative, and you can use that negative, that is to say the PNM. The negative is with them. Eh? Uh, you can use that negative um, to energize a change in the way leadership behaves. Now, one of the things that we should say right now is that the leadership was being invited to view the PNM electors in, in, in a greater and a positive light, greater positive light. Um, you know, part of the problem we face in our democracy in Trinidad and Tobago DK is that after the vote, the people can hardly participate in governance. We, our system is just not designed for continuous participation of voters in the governance process. Now, we don't know, of course, what happened when the Rowley's, if and when Dr. Rowley's party forms the government. But uh, we, we can be sure that one of the reasons why the leadership of the PNM acted in the way that it did, which was an authoritarian way of acting, um, it was part of the inheritance, the political inheritance. One of the traditions we have had over the years, the leadership thinks that it is entitled to act in the way it did. So if the population sees, or that particular constituent, constituency sees, that the, there is a change in attitude on the part of the PNM. There can be a renovation of attitudes um, in favor of the PNM. And, and in that sense, this affection can be used um, with positive outcomes or <clears throat> for the achievement of positive purposes. Yes? Now, the Prime Minister spoke about transition. No, he did not give any definites, but along the lines or focusing on transition you just spoke about energizing uh individuals and having them feel that they have skin in the game they have a say how do we energize youth so that they think that they have a role to play in governance this may be as candidates or as electors because sometimes you just hear youth saying well it doesn't matter so I will go with PIP, the party in power. What do, are some of the tweaks that you think are necessary to 
have the youth involve themselves a little more? Uh, well, that's a very, a very important question. One of the ways, of course, is uh, through uh, electoral reform, constitution reform. Uh, constitution reform that faces, um, uh, gives more independence of thought and action to parliamentarians, separates the executive from the legislature. Right now, the legislature is really the executive. If, if the executive has sufficient numbers, they are the ones setting the time, the legislative agenda, and they are the ones whose votes are the ones that make a bill pass. So we need to have a situation where we make a change between the, the two, the, two of the arms of government in the interest of uh, independent representation of their constituencies. We're going to hear the voices of parliamentarians if we went about separating, as I said, the executive, that is the cabinet, from um, the legislatures. That's one of the things to be done. Even right now, um, in the parliament, the, uh, the, uh, the executive could be giving uh, uh, <clears throat> more, uh, uh, let's say, senior rules um, to the new part, the young parliamentarians. That can happen. Um, and that depends, of course, in, to a certain extent on the portfolios that younger members of the ruling party are given. And of course, it depends on how um, senators are chosen and what the opposition does with their young people. <clears throat> but we need that. We, we also need um, to have civic groups, civil society groups incorporated into governance directly through uh, a, a change in the constitution or by invitation to come into the parliament uh, and the, the best place for them to do so in the present arrangement is the senate uh, coming in and if they are not made part of the senate just yet but by some accommodation having them express their views on major matters like for example the appointment of a president like the budget and so on, how the budget is determined. You know, these are the kinds of ways that would make people feel that their views can, that first of all, they have views, and those views can be expressed and be given. And we cannot definitively say whether or not uh, the fact that Saddam Hussein was in the Senate would have helped increase his margin, but at the same time, uh, Definitely, it's one thing to look at. So we thank you very much, Dr. James Winford James, political I scientist. I didn't think you just said sorry. No, he said that <laughs> Saddam, Saddam Hussein, uh, the fact we can't def definitively say that his time in the Senate would have helped bump the margin up in terms of the constituency of Barataria San Juan. But hopefully that's a conversation that we may be able to have another day. But we thank you very much for the time that you were able to share with us this evening, Dr. James. And we look forward to another one. You're welcome, DK. We will do this many other times, I suspect. I, and I hope, that's, I, I hope that suspicion is the right one. But thank you <laughs> once more. And we want to thank you for joining us on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Roster. Have a good night.